I, I, you know, I always use this concept of space. There, there was a great deal of space in Dungeons and Dragons. And I remember, like, when I think back to playing Keep on the Borderlands, finally getting to the Caves of Chaos, and I can hear my older brother Malik to this day reading that introduction <laughs> to what happens and how, you know, there's a ravine and, you know, the valley clears out the way and, you know, the vines are no longer tangled and you feel this foreboding, overwhelming <laughs> evil. And somebody's reading this to you. It's not a movie. And so your mind is interacting with that and you can see it and you can feel it. And it becomes real, but it's really just you and your brother <laughs> laying on the floor in the attic. Like, that's really all it is. The notion that words, um, that literature can transport you is something that people are used to getting from Dickens, uh, used to getting from Huck Finn, used to getting from Fitzgerald. That's what, like, writers will tell you about their earliest influences. And that's great. Like, that's a beautiful thing. I, you know, I don't, I love all of that. I'm not knocking that at all. But I'm trying to say that... Dungeons and Dragons was one of the first places I got it, that words can take you somewhere else, that having all of that space uh, is a good thing.